Keys time. What's up, what's up, guys, and welcome back to the Keys Method. I'm Chris Keys, and this is absolutely the best place for music creators, music producers, and my entrepreneurs. Today, we are talking with Texas artists that are the hottest in the state, making real big noise in their city, and I'm so privileged and I'm so honored to have a good friend of mine. We've been knowing each other for several years. Welcome to the Keys Method, Anastasia. Hey, Chris Keys. Thanks for having me on. I'm honored to be here. Man, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. You know, I've talked to you for, you know, several times. We had several conversations over the years, but I'm kind of excited about this one because I've never really gotten to know your whole story of how you blossomed from like point A to point B. I mean, you've been yeah. doing your thing for, I, I would say, at least I know for a decade. I mean, I saw you release music back in 2012. I don't know what you did before then, but that's why I got you on the show. So you can tell me, and for those that are listening, just your whole come up of how you got into hip hop, how you got into music. So let's start from the very beginning. Like, did you pop, did you come into this world with, with bars or <laughs> how, how did this all start for you? Well, you know, I think I came into this world definitely with a talent for words. Okay. Definitely with, you know, an overactive imagination, but I don't think I really discovered that I was a rapper until I was about 12, you know, just sort of figuring out who I was becoming as a, as a young lady. That's and early. It is, but I think at that time in music, it was, there was like a revolution going on, especially as far as hip hop was concerned. So, right. so now I'm getting stuff from from the East Coast and there's Tribe Called Quest and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, it's a little more abstract and they're telling stories and they're using jazz and it just added another element to me. And I'm like, I, I think I can do that. I think that's for me. Right. I mean, was, was it a challenge starting or was it, you know, because I think female uh, hip hop artists, I don't know if I'm not a, 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 a artist or a female, but was it any type of challenge coming up as a female trying to you know, uh, commit, you know, make your stance in the hip hop game? Did you have any feedback or, or challenges starting out? It was not easy, no, but I lived, I was fortunate enough to live in a neighborhood, you know, with a lot of, a lot of people that, whose opinions are respected. You sure. know, we'd play basketball, you know, maybe I wrote something last night and I'd bring my little notepad to the court and I'm like, hey, hey, y'all, listen, listen, listen. And they were honest with me. They would tell me if something was whack, you know, they laughed me off and I got my feelings hurt, but I needed all of that. All of that was really constructive for me. Um, and I, at that time, I was really the only girl doing it. And I think I felt like that was an exciting challenge too. Oh, okay, you can underestimate me, but check this out, you know? So I think that was part of the appeal for me was just really surprising people with what I could do. Yeah, def now where are, you, where are you originally from? Well, I was born in San Antonio. See, I never tell people this, but I was born in San Antonio, but okay. I'm a lifelong Austinite. I've been here since I was two, you know? I, this is my city. I went to school here and this is it for me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and it's that's that's the cool thing about Austin. I mean, it's a melting pot, but if you're if you were here at two, you are Austin night. You have the allergies. You you got yes. the footprints, and <laughs> man, you definitely. I mean, everybody in the city right now is trying to work with you, trying to get at you. So, I mean, we're not. I mean, from where you started with the only female to right. now, I mean, I think you are are respected, and people don't even approach you or look at you as, hey, this is a female artist. I think you're just branded yourself as hey you're you're the obviously the queen of hip-hop and Austin one of the queens here but just <laughs> just one of the the top artists here I mean for sure making noise uh and Austin so I mean you've, you've been honored and and you know received a lot of awards you know Austin has South by Southwest you participated in right. South by Southwest right I mean we have you know newspapers and magazines articles I mean you've been featured on so much so much stuff was that a goal for you coming into Austin or did it just happen I think for me it just happened but it was all like I didn't realize that these were goals of mine until they were within my grasp oh there's a thing called Austin Hip Hop Awards I want that 
You right, know, right. oh, I grew up reading the Austin Chronicle. I want that. Oh, I grew up reading reviews in the Statesman. I want, you know, so I, I think as the more I evolved as an artist, the more these things felt like they were within my reach. Sure. And, you know, I felt like I had the talent to go after them. So, um, yeah, it just kind of fell in my lap. Well, I worked for these things, obviously. I worked, I worked hard, you know, it was a lot of late nights and tears and a lot of self-examination and all of that. But, you know, it's nice to be able to reach out and touch the people who are doing the blogging and doing the writing and people like you that are, you know, doing the talking and, and, and investigating. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. we definitely going to do our best to expose, you know, talent, you know, these different platforms and stuff like that. You know, Austin is is growing. Uh, I think we're becoming a, a, a stronger people outside. I said it before, we're not really a big music hub just yet. You know, like the New Yorks, the the L.A.'s, Atlanta, Miami, stuff like that, Nashville. Right. But we're getting there. Um, so for the people that are moving to Austin, especially for any female artists out there, like what advice uh, could you give them if they're just moving to uh, Austin or moving to a city and wanting to make their presence known? That's a good question. And I think, and this is where I feel like I've lacked here and there back and forth over the years it's your network your network is everything find people of a like mind you know find people who care just as much about music as you do um, and stay connected with those people keep up with them learn from them you know have something to bring to the table offer your time be available um, but because there's so many people here that are doing it you're really missing out if you're not taking advantage of the support system that we already have. You know, sometimes we talk about how divided and how there's so many silos within Austin music and especially Austin hip hop. Um, but, and, and some of that is, is uh, some of us is, you know, for some of us it's a defense mechanism, but I really think that reaching out, remaining available, keeping an open mind will really take you places that you haven't imagined. Sure. So, I mean, I'm old school. When I got here, I got here around 2009. Uh, I was a guy that printed up flyer, flyers and posters. And right. I, I was like, man, let's get a street team. You know, I, I grew up in Alabama. So I was like, Master P was always like one of my heroes. Let's let's get out here in these streets. And I still do that today. I, I don't know if anybody, when I have events, I still print up, you know, 2,000, 5,000 flyers. And I you know people going to throw them away. And some people will keep them. But what type of approach do you have now when you say networking and getting out there? I mean, we have the internet. Uh, I know when we probably started, I think MySpace was the biggest internet we had now, but I mean, now we have Facebook, we have so many different yeah. platforms online. Like what's your give and take for actually getting out there in the streets and just, you know, sending somebody an invite on Facebook or something. Right. It's definitely evolved. Cause I remember that era. You know, yeah. where we, we were going and getting flyers printed up and we were stickers and exactly like putting CDs in cases and sliding the inserts in. And we, we were doing all that stuff. And I, I honestly, I didn't foresee those days ending. Now, I'll say it's evolved in a way that has been beneficial to me only because I'm not I, unless I have a specific reason for being out. Or, or I'm working or I'm on a bill somewhere, I, I'm not really a going out type of person. I'd really rather be home with my notebook, you know, right, going right, over, right, right. Over whatever is next. Um, so I think over the years, it's become easier with social media um, to network and all these different platforms. Um, but I will say that nothing beats face-to-face, hand-to-hand, eye contact, being in the same room with somebody to really get a gauge for who they are. Um, so really, it's about striking a balance. You know, obviously, we're in a pandemic and, and going out and being in clubs and close quarters is not what it used to be. Um, and it may not be that for, the way for a while. Um, I have found that virtual shows um, and then taking advantage of the new apps that are popping up, like Clubhouse, you know, I, I sat oh, there. No. And I, yeah, I decided to use it for about a week. And I said, let's see what happens. Let's see who I can meet. Let's see who I can have a conversation with. Let's see you know, what this, what this can do, where this can carry me. And I actually got good results from it. So really it's just about staying attuned to where people are because it's constantly changing. You know, right. this, this platform has a little more pull now, but then this one is coming up. You know, there's a lot. It's just staying on top of it and keeping current with it. 
man. It seemed like you kind of find your niche. And I think that's important for a lot of artists that are yeah. listening and starting out, you know, find your niche, you know, don't try to do everything just because something works for one person. It might not be the best thing for that's you. Cool. And it seems like you found that, you know, online, you know, you, you have a good online presence, yeah. uh, you know, reaching out to people that way. So that's kind of, yeah. that's kind of yeah. cool that you found your niche a little bit. Yeah. Um, change well, and, era. Right. I'm still working on it. You know, it's still, it's, it's still difficult because again, everybody has the megaphone now with, with social media and with, with right. these apps and, you know, everybody's resume is right there and there's a different sense of competition. You know, people aren't really, you know, it used to be that I'd make really dope connections when I performed at a show and I got off stage and then people wanted to meet me and, you know, I met so many people and gotten so many opportunities like that. But without that, it's really just, you know, okay, I'm, I'm really thinking, what does my profile picture say? Okay, what does my bio say? How is that linked into my YouTube where I really need subscribers right now? So yeah, it's a different level of thought, but I, 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 I'm I down with this. I dig it. I like being able to work from my space. Yeah, that's, I, I like it too, man. I'm yeah. this, These walls that you see right here out of 24 <laughs> hours. Yeah. I like being in this room right here, like 18 of those it. hours and sleeping the rest. Like, I don't <laughs> mind being in my room, but I know you have to get out every once yeah. in a while. So, I mean, so you've transitioned, uh, like you said, you've done the live shows, you, you've done so many things. Like, how is these these new virtual concerts been? Because I haven't really done any uh, okay. yet. So how is that for you? Is it different than how you, I mean, obviously it's different, but talk, talk to me about your virtual shows now. Okay. So those kind of fall into two different categories for me. They're the ones that, you know, we do from home yep. uh, where, you know, we're buying little gadgets and gadgets so that we sound right and buying ring lights so we look right and, and, and that. And then there are venues who are offering, you know, well, we've got all the equipment. We basically got a, sound, a studio here with all the equipment you ever need, you know, come in and perform your show here. Mm -hmm. um, that's also valid. So, I've enjoyed it because I think it allows for a more intimate experience. Um, I feel like I'm heard better. You know, uh, I, the people who are watching want to be there. They're not waiting for the next act. They're not distracted by the bar. You know, um, the energy exchange obviously is different because, you know, I, I can't see the people that I'm interacting with. You know, I, I, I can't feed off their energy in the same way that I would if we were in the same. That's room. what I would think that would affect me because, you know, it, it's yeah. like, I mean, you, the, the live is really, you go for the energy. Right. You know, when I'm on stage, I play better when people are, yeah, you know, hollering and, yeah. just, you know, yeah. just even around just the crowd noise, people coming up. I mean, that's kind of, it has to be hard. It's like, oh, I'm just looking at myself on the screen. I got to right. still act like it's a million, like a thousand people cheering, but it's not, I mean, they'll watch yeah. you live. Was that, challenging or no or I think yeah, it's a yeah, mental yeah. Thing yeah. Or? it really is um because you're like okay I know I did one at safe house actually for my birthday every year I try to do some sort of performance for my birthday and mm. so this year it was safe house ATX and it was in a really small space so I got a band behind me and then there's a wall about 15 feet 10 to 15 feet in front of me and there's cameras it's like okay do I look at the cameras do I look beyond the cameras do I you know what do I do where do I direct my attention so that is the challenge but really I think I think that as long as people can see you enjoying yourself I think that goes a long way you know I think the important thing is not to overthink it you know, what do you do when you're in practice? What do you do when you're in your studio alone and it is just you? So, I mean, as long as you have that energy and you're feeling yourself, I think it comes through. Yeah, def I mean, when I'm in my studio by myself, I just turn it up loud and I'm jumping like <laughs> I'm making myself believe yeah, I'm in the club. Or I'm at a party and yep. that's what that's what helps me out. Same and speak thing. Speaking about live, I mean, you did a show uh, not too long ago. Uh, it's on her YouTube page. Matter of fact, tell people where they can find you on your YouTube page real quickly. Oh, yes. So YouTube, official Anya. Um, and I've, I've kind of got a mix up there right now of sort of, you know, stuff like little 16 bars that I've recorded around the house, official videos, and then clips from my live performances. But yeah, if they just go to YouTube and search for official Anya, everything is right there. 
So I saw uh, on your YouTube page, you did a video. Uh, I guess I don't know. I guess it was recently you had your band, uh, Anastasia and the Heroes. I believe that's yeah. the name of the band. Right. So was that one of those live performances with no crowd where you just had the cameras <laughs> and well, see, that, popping one, out? that one was a little bit unique because okay. uh, I Tell believe I'm referring to Purple BTV. And so they've got a studio set up. So, you know, you've got the, the area, the stage sort of area where people perform, but then you've got a glass and then a, a sort of an area where you got a studio engineer and mixing space and then another studio beyond that one. So it's a little, you are actually performing to a very small audience. Like, so there are people there to connect with you and in between songs, they're cheering you on. You know, you can see facial expressions, you can see okay. them smiling and getting in, you know, getting involved with the music. So that one was a little different, but I think that what, what made that particular show so great was the atmosphere. Um, it was really laid back. Okay, come out here, load in. We're going to cook some dinner over here. And, you know, what, everything we wanted was right there. There was no rush. There was no pressure. Um, there were no people. And that, you know, that was awesome for me. Just, you know, just a few of us. And we're just, we're just musicians doing what we love to do. And I think that that comes across in that particular performance. It does. I mean, I, I could see y'all up there just talking about, hey, can I get a solo? And hey, y'all go ahead and just vibe out. It's like, yeah. man, y'all, it looked like y'all was really just just having fun, like a normal just practice. I don't I mean, just hanging out and, and, and vibing. Yeah. It was, y'all definitely go check out that video and some other stuff. And speaking of videos, what's your process when you record these music videos? Like, are you a part of the vision or directing or are you just because they're they're so dope. I mean, they're unique. You know, they stand out. Are you, are you working with Austin directors? Are you reaching out? Like, tell, talk to me about these music videos you have coming. Well, I think that I've come to the point, and I think a lot of us have evolved to the point where the visual is sort of inseparable from the song. You know, we're telling a complete story now. Yeah. So, you know, whereas people can listen to the song and maybe form their own idea as to what it's about and what's going on and what the imagery is like. I think if we as artists have the opportunity to paint that picture, like in even more vivid terms, then it's really up to us to do that. So, uh, you know, the way that I've been operating the last few years is every every release gets some sort of visual element because that's what people want. That's what people crave. And it allows me to insert things that people that wouldn't think about usually. Um, so what I do is usually when I write a song or I come up with something, I have an idea as to how it looks. Okay, this one is gloomy. This one is sad. This one is cheerful. This one is intimate. You know, whatever the case may be. Um, and I looked up and found Dan to the L. He's a really dope videographer. He's got a really great eye. He can make something out of nothing. I trust him, which is important. You know, as a woman, I want somebody that can capture my best angles. Like, don't make me look crazy, you know, in front of the world, you know. So <laughs> um, usually what I'll do is I'll send him the song, send him some some type of outline as to what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay, I need imagery all related to clarity. You know, I need imagery all related to, you know, sitting in the driver's seat, taking control of my career, my destiny. So I send him my ideas. He's usually like, oh, yeah, we can do that. And then he'll come with his own ideas. And really, I, I think the relationship is what makes it work. He trusts me to come with a complete, coherent vision. And I trust him to be able to, to do what the technical side and make the visual sort of fit with what I fit with my idea. Right. So it's two videos I kind of want to dig in and ask you a little bit your vision. And that's okay. clarity and that's okay. changing lanes, because those are two. One of my two of my favorites, you know, right okay. now of uh, videos of you. So like, what was your vision behind clarity first? Because Ooh. that one seems to be getting a really good response. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I really wanted to that one. I think the concept, you know, I, I love concepts. But I realized that a lot of people don't listen to lyrics. So the concepts might be missing them, right? Did so you have like, the visual? Did you have the vision while you was writing or, or I after? did. I did. No, I did have the vision when I was writing. I was like, well, I want to talk about clarity and epiphany and breakthrough, but I want to personify those things as a woman 
You know, as I've said before, when you think about, you know, your wife, your mother, your sister, those are the people in your life that are going to be real with you. Oh, yeah. That's who, that's who clarity is. Right. So I want to insert myself as that. I want to, I want to show, you know, all the other things that clarity represents. So fire, sunlight, you know, clear, transparent water, um, you know, glasses. I'm like, okay, well, there are all these items and objects that represent clarity that I think will really get the point across. Um, so that's where that came from. I just, you know, went down the list. How can I represent these ideas to people and make it make sense? Definitely. And that one's on your YouTube page as well, right? Yes, absolutely. Go check it out. Clarity. And then you have this other one, which when I saw this one, I was like, okay, you just took it to another level with the, with the yeah. changing lanes. Like, I mean, you right. didn't got an 18 wheeler out here. Like who, yeah. who who's 18 wheeler is, wheeler is that man? I mean, you, that one was a dope video too. Like what's the vision behind that one? Well, so somebody, well, the guy that owns the, the CDL school wanted a jingle or a theme song for his school. And he, you know, posted that on Facebook and somebody tagged me. And, you know, it was a time, it was during a time where there was like a lull, you know, I'm not feeling very creative, you know, it's, it's October, you know, so we're sort of, it's going to be a dark winter, you know, they're all this yeah. doom and gloom, it's like, I need to do something to distract myself. Mm. So I said, well, I'll take it on. He had a beat that he was really in love with. It was a minute long. I'm like, well, if I can't write a minute long song, then something is really wrong with me. You know what I mean? Right. So for me, it was a challenge. And then, you know, I asked him. Um, well, since it's a CDL truck driving school, don't you think it would make more sense to have a male voice? And he said, well, you know what? You'd be surprised how many women come through lately yeah. wanting to mm -hmm. get their CDL license. Mm -hmm. And that was really what sold it for me because I'm all about that empowerment angle. Um, I'm all about speaking to women and, and, and sending them a positive message. Okay, yeah, girl, take four weeks. Go pay your money, get yourself, you know, add to your skill set. So that's why it was important for me to do. But yeah, you know, he hit me up on a Friday. By Monday, he had himself a dope song. And I said, well, let's just take it to the next level. I know a, a guy that can shoot videos. Can you get us a truck? Sure. Um, he said, do you want to drive the truck? Sure. Well, because I feel like it's my job as an artist, not only, you know, to shoot the video, not only to be rapping, not to only be in the truck, but I want to be in the driver's seat because that's the message that I want to send. I don't think it carries the same weight if I'm in the passenger seat performing the song and, you know, someone else is driving me, you know. So I think with every one of these projects that you see, like my goal is to do better than the last one, to go bigger, you know, to, to really, there's a certain light that I want to be portrayed in, right? Mm -hmm. And you know this, we have to portray ourselves in that light before anybody else will accept it. Right. So for me, it's like, you know, if I want to show people that I'm serious and I'm about my business and I have messages that are worth hearing, I have to treat the message like that, too. Now, I think that's awesome for you, for you to say. And I think you've shown that you've been consistent over the years. And I'm glad you brought up, you know, women empowerment, uh, yeah. because, you know, for 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 the past few years, I mean, you've done. A lot of collaborations with, uh, you know, female artists out here, you know, Elisa Lani, Miss B. Uh, yeah. I can't even think of, you know, probably some more other people. I just can't oh, rattle yeah. off, off the top of my head. Yeah. You know, so how has that do you think that has played a part and maybe inspired other females to either get into hip hop, get into their artistry or to tap in with themselves? I hope so. I really, really hope so, because I, I think when I first started, it was it was difficult. Because naturally, there are less women rappers out here. And I think the first instinct is to pit them against each other. Oh, she did this and she's doing this. And, you know, I, I'm like, I don't I don't understand that, you know, and I don't want to feed into that. I don't want to be part of that system. You know, the system that keeps us not talking to each other and not working together. So, you know, I think over the years doing songs, bringing different women in to, you know, to write a hook here, or come sing this, or, you know, write a, even some spoken word, like, let's work together. I ended up just with a collection of songs. You know, people were saying, we need an all-female mixtape. And I'm like, you know what? I kind of got one in my catalog. So that's where Kate came from. And I think the, the, the root of that for me was just showing other female artists that, look, if you got your own resources. If we pull our resources, you know, your studio, your performance venue, your marketing, your voice, my writing, we can be unstoppable. 
So I love it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged to see women sort of with a bigger platform in the mainstream working together and, and moving together. And so that's always gonna be part of who I am as an artist is, is, is showing, setting an example. Cause there was a time in my life when I didn't do music at all. I didn't have music in my life whatsoever. And I, I was empty. I didn't realize what was missing until I got behind the mic or I learned how to record myself and, and mix a song here and there. Like those things were so empowering for me. It like opened up a whole new world. And I really wanna pass that along to other women. I appreciate you saying that and not, not only just saying it, but actually having it documented so people right. can go back and be like, you know, she put her money where her mouth is. She she's doing these things. She's just not saying it and not doing it because so many people that, you know, they talk that talk, but they don't right. walk that walk, you know. Right. So tell me, you know, is there a difference because you, you're like your performances are off the chain, but then you have this studio. Is there a difference? I, I know the answer to this. I'm a big. I, is there a difference between rapping in the studio and rapping on stage? I know I know we talked about this COVID, this pandemic, but right. even before that, you know, when you were doing the South by Southwest and the Fun 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 Fest and all these other festivals, yeah. like what is the difference between getting in the studio with that energy and live? Is there a difference to you or no? There is. There is. And, you know, I actually had to think about that. And I'm curious like, to know what question? your answer is. Too. Yeah, that was a great one. Um, because yes, in the studio, well, and you know, it might not be the same for every artist because you know, those artists right, right, that come right. in with the entourage to hype them up and you know, to give them feedback immediately. Whereas it's usually because just because of the way that I work, I, I do a lot of stuff alone by myself. I'm kind of just writing in here in the back room with my door closed, and then it's just me and the engineer, and you know, that's it. Um, so you kind of have to find that that energy on your own, which I don't have any problem doing. You know, in so there is a difference for me. Right. Um, I was taught a long time ago that you know when you go into the studio, it should be you know the Anya show, it should be the Anastasia show right off the bat. You know, you're going, you're one taking it, you know, and then you got the camera mm -hmm. out and you're, you know, and all of that is cool. <laughs> all of that is cool but I don't know the studio being in the studio is such a like sacred experience for me you know it's like church it's like prayer um so I don't mind you know sort of the quiet you know not loneliness but the quiet sort of solitude of it um it is a complete 180 for me from performing in live in front of an audience because I usually I have to initiate that energy I have to bring it and then once people see it from me then they shoot it right back so yeah it is there is a difference do you prefer one over the other I don't I get different things out of out of each one you know there's nothing like you know that high when you get off stage and you know you killed it and you know there's people lining up and they're smiling ear to ear or they're in tears or whatever it is Right. You know, you, you know how that feels. And that's a feeling that I wouldn't trade for the world. But then there's also that that moment. It's like, OK, you come out the booth now. You sit down, you listen back and you're like, wow, I, I did something there. You know, I, that's how I want to sound all the time. So I think they're both valuable um, and, you know, they both have a place in my heart. Man, that's interesting. That's why I like talking to different people, because, you know, the first when I first started uh, this podcast, I had a series called 14 Keys to Thinking Like a Pro. And okay. basically, I asked the same questions to 14 different professionals like yourself. And it's kind of crazy how they all said the same thing, but they just got there a different way. Right. You know and so that's why I want to want you to share that, because, you know, it's like a book. A lot yeah. of these books say the same thing, but some, you know, books, movies, they just hit you differently. You yeah. know, so hopefully, yeah, yeah, definitely. So so go on, add it on to that. So you have your studio energy, you have yeah. your live performance energy. Uh, I, I guess I'll preference by saying a live uh, with a backing track or a DJ. And then you have your band energy. Yes. Is it any of those that you prefer out of those three? Because of the band <laughs> is a different energy. <laughs> it is. And, you know, I don't want to I don't want to say that I prefer one over the other, but I really love performing with a live band. Yeah. The energy, because the energy is so much. I'm a, first of all, any sort of musical instrument, I don't care what genre it is, 
I am amazed by it, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, and, and having that with me and being able to interact with it and then having those musicians be able to interpret my music, you know, with their own That's a cool like, feeling though. Like, y'all woo. playing my music. Like, this is, y'all, y'all, y'all playing that? I'm- it hits yeah. different. It and hits. a lot of the yeah. stuff that they're playing is stuff that, you know, it started out as maybe loops, you know? It's the same, it's simple, it's rap. You know what I mean? So there may not be a whole lot of melody to it, but what they add to it and how they build on it, like, I don't think that there's, and I think you can see it when I'm performing with them, like, oh, that is really genuine. I'm enjoying that the same way that I would with an audience, well, as a member of an audience. But the beautiful part and the difference is I get to be up there with them. And, you know, I get to interject and I get to say something or sing something or whatever it is. I, you know, I love it. I love performing with the band. That's my jam. Yeah, I think the band, like you said, it's just it's just another layer or another frequency <laughs> added to what you already have. Yep. Um, already uh, put together and, you know yeah. I, I work a studio and I work with you know a lot of artists around you know Austin and the outside areas and man you'll be surprised how many hip-hop artists come mm-hmm. in and be like man do you know Anastasia man I gotta <laughs> get with her man how, how can I get on the track man she has a band and yeah. you know so for those artists that that come and, and try to tap in with you tell them one tell them how they could connect with you um out there well I'm pretty, you know, actually pretty. I'm very accessible. So if we're Facebook friends, you're probably one of my personal Facebook friends. You're not just somebody who liked my artist page somewhere. Um, and I'm open. You can hit me up. You can ask me for it. You can tell me you don't like the last thing that I did and we can talk about it. You know, if, if you find me on Instagram, which is Anastasia Hera, I think pretty much everything now has been converted to Anastasia Hera. I had to go by my last name because there are so many Anastasias. And actually, there's a few Anastasia Harris out there, too. So I'm, I'm trying to work my way around that. But um, email, phone, hit me up through a friend of a friend. It really doesn't matter. Um, I just I love talking to people who are of a like mind. Um, I love giving advice. I love, like I said earlier, I love learning new things. Like, you know, I, there's no way that I'd be the artist that I am today if it wasn't for watching other artists. Ooh, I like the way he performs on stage or I like the way she flipped that verse. You know, that's that's what feeds me is just learning from other people. Is there any advice that you have for those artists that, you know, really like your style and they see you with the band and they were like, you know what, male and female, you know, yeah. you'd be surprised how many male artists come and say they want to work with you and want you a part of their album you know so how do you how did you get to the point where you built the band because I think you know living in Austin the live music capital of the world you know so many people you know we go to these venues and there's so many live bands but they just don't know how to build a band you know right right right. What, what, what advice do you have for them to build a band because it's not easy no. for everybody you know so what, what tips do you have on that So uh, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. It's really about the connections. You know, you meet musicians who will just, they'll they'll play and make their money, you know, but they may not put heart into it. And it it may take a while before you find musicians that you vibe with. Um, But I would say, don't stop. You know, don't, don't limit yourself. You know, if you're able to go out and meet people in person or, you know, I remember, you know, Dozen Street had their, their open, my, their butter and jam. You, know, you can meet world class musicians in there. You strike up a conversation, you get to know them. They might be playing your next show with you. So it's it, again, it's all going to fall back on the network. Um, and one thing that I will say is a lot of people, a lot of rap artists don't know music. You know, sometimes they, they struggle with the melody, they struggle with what sounds right musically. The words and the swag, they got all that. That's down because they can perform their ass off. But when it comes to what sounds good and how to interact and how to flow with musicians to, you know, so that it feels natural and not forced, um, that takes practice. So find people who are willing to grow with you. Um, and that know what sounds good and be willing to take feedback and advice. We don't know everything, you know? Yeah. You know, your music, you know, your lyrics, but you, 
certain things may not work and you have to be open to hearing somebody tell you what may not work and what needs to be changed. I think that's a good point. Being open, you know, right. as a music producer, you know, I, I, I recently got into DJing uh, because one of my producer friends is like, man, DJing is more than just spinning songs. You'll really learn how to be a better producer okay. once you get into DJing. You know, you'll learn BPMs. You'll learn what yeah. the crowd reacts to. You'll learn, you know, how to transition. And yeah. then you now you know how to go back in the studio and create those exact emotions uh, wow. in, in the studio. And and guys, I think just another tip for anybody who's looking to build a band, I think a big key in which uh, Anya said is networking, meaning you have to get out your comfort zone, maybe yeah. your studio or your house or your apartment, whatever, and actually get out there and support these musicians and they'll support you back. Like you said, go to their shows. I mean, I think that's the best place to find a musician is when they're yeah. playing or, right. you know, a lot of musicians go watch other musicians play uh as well so that's a big part of uh building a band too going out there and actually supporting them and like you said striking up a conference conversation and you never know uh, yeah. where we're in absolutely so tell me what's next for you i mean you got i mean you got i think this is really a breakout year for you you know i'm not i don't i definitely don't want to say this is your best year because i think your best is yet to come yeah. But I'm just a producer and I, I, I evaluate and I, I see talent before it really hits and takes off. I think that's my one of my gifts. Okay. But what's next for you? Like, what do you really what's next for your career? Any goals or any visions that you see in the in the future? Absolutely. So and, you know, I started saying this toward the end of last year. Um, I, I, I wanted to get to a certain point artistically where I could trust my voice, uh, where I know the content is good, it's 100%. I know that it can be listened to and understood. And you know, you don't have to come and ask me, what did you mean by this and that? Like, it's it's clear, that was, you know, clarity. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and I said that my next step was being able to get this music in front of more eyes and more ears. And so that's my focus for 2021. Um, I actually just signed a distribution deal through So Bold Entertainment slash Sony Orchard. Um, and so they're gonna be distributing my next project worldwide. And I'm looking at my time frame, and, and you know, that's another thing that I've learned is not to not to limit myself by a time frame, but to use it as a guideline. So I'm looking at late spring, early summer for that. I'm really excited about it. Um, and they represent some other really, really dope artists that I'm looking forward to working with. Um, but really, and you know, it's just another extension of what I was saying earlier, is just expanding my network and getting my music in places where it previously hasn't been. You know what I mean? It's been accessible in Austin and I, you know, I've, I've used those connections. I haven't, I, maybe not to the extent that I could, um, but I have, you know, I've involved myself, but now it's time to move outside of this place that has been so good to me and, and, and reach out further around the world, you know, around the country, start doing different, um, doing different collaborations with other artists. So really that's the goal for me. Um, and, you know, I'm really excited about, you know, signing that deal. I got a tour coming up at the beginning of May. So I'll be able to kind of spread the word and spread the love and take it outside of Austin, take it on the road. So I got a lot of things in the works that I'm really excited about. Definitely. Congratulations on uh, signing with your with your deal. I mean, I think that's well, well uh, deserved. Uh, you've put in the work, the legwork. Um, so definitely, guys, tap in with with Anya if, if you're in a city hopefully she'll be coming to a city near you and performing and definitely support you know these artists you don't have to wait for her to come to your city I mean you you could do something very simple as right now just clicking on the link below and going to her YouTube page subscribing liking it hitting the notification bell doing all those little things and let her know that hey leave a comment hey I saw this interview and I, I love your music yeah. Reach out to me when you come to the city or reach out to me when you drop another video or something like that. Those are free ways to support uh, any artist. I mean, you guys do it with the big artists or so do, it right. with, you know, do it with these these artists that are, you know, I always say every professional was once an amateur. And I'm not saying you're amateur, nothing like that. But we all have levels of, of how we grow in. And you guys watching you, y'all are a major, major part of our success. So we Absolutely. definitely appreciate uh you guys for for tapping in with us for sure 
Right. And I mean, it's, it's, let's never discount the importance of, you know, people in your hometown supporting you and being behind you. I, you know, I think I, you know, I could make the sky is the limit, but if the people I grew up with and, you know, and the people who started out hearing me on the basketball court are, if I lose them, I don't know if it's the same, you know, and I've, I've struggled with that over the past few years. It's like, where do I fall? You know, are people here listening to me? Do they realize what I'm doing? And, you know, the only solution to that is just to keep working. Okay, I just need to put out more music. Oh, okay, I just need to go a little bit harder. You yeah. know what I mean? So, you know, but but that's important. And yeah, I, like I was saying earlier, I love engaging with people that know me or kind of vaguely know me or want to get to know me. All of that is, I agree, very important. So one last thing before I let you go. I know okay. you got some more stuff going on. So people that have been in the game for, for a while now, you know, five, 10, you know, year, I mean, even if you've done it for a year, you're going to hit a wall where, like you say, maybe you're not feeling creative, you know, as a producer, I'm just not, uh, I'm just not feeling it today. Or man, you know, you, not saying you doubt yourself, but maybe you, we're human. We want to see results for our time and our effort. And maybe we're just not getting the the response that we, we think we, we want to have for this video or this song or something like that. So what advice do you have from your experience um, when you hit those walls? How do you keep going? Because that's easy to say, but just keep going. But how do you really lock in mentally or physically to pick up the pen, pick up the pad and, and keep writing, to keep doing songs, to keep releasing music? Because that's very difficult for a lot of people to, to do. How do you do it? Ooh, and I've had those moments. I've hit the wall several times. We all times. do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know if I'll ever write another lyric again. Like, I've felt like that. And it's the worst feeling in the world, you know, because I call myself a rapper. I call myself a songwriter, but I haven't picked up the pen in a month, yeah. you know. Um, but I think what has worked for me is, first of all, just being realistic mm. and being kind to myself. You know, if your brother came to you and said, oh, I'm not feeling well, I don't feel like writing the day, you might, you wouldn't, you wouldn't scold him the way that you might scold yourself. You know, you yeah. might not tear him down the way you might tear yourself down and be like, oh, you're just being lazy and such. No, no, no. Give yourself time. Uh, you know, be understanding, be gentle with yourself, you know, because nobody else will, you know, um, but realize that it is, you know, Motivation is one thing, but you can't always depend on that motivation. Right. So in the absence of that, consistency, consistency is yes. what will win every single time. So, you know, it could be the end of the day. I've worked eight hours. I've cooked. I've done laundry. I went to exercise. I'm beat. It's 1159. I want to go to bed. But you know what? Let me play that track and pull up this notepad. And sometimes I might add a word. Sometimes I might take out a word, but it's it's progress. You know what I mean? And and that that in itself is fulfilling. So sometimes just realize that progress is going to be slow. Mm -hmm. You know, allow yourself to have that, but know that it's going to get better as long as you keep at it. Yeah, keep at it. And guys, just like like she said, just stay consistent. You know, I think that is probably if I talk to anybody, I would say consistency beats talent sometimes you know just keep working at it you know and, and it's like I said when you're not feeling creative maybe writing you know we use our right side of our brain as creators so just be creative maybe in different ways you know if you have writer's block and you you can't write to a particular beat I tell artists you know go watch a movie turn the turn the volume off right and write what you think they're saying write what you think that scene is about and turn it into a song you know, uh, wait wait never heard that oh gems gems right there <laughs> you're giving the game away yeah, yeah it's, it's, i love that yeah i think i heard that uh i was talking to a grammy writer or something like that i forget their name and they was like you know what once you get to a certain certain level and the demand is on you you know like yourself you got people want features hey yeah. i want a beat i want this blah 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 yeah. you cannot afford this is this is how you put food on the table right. you can't afford to go to a studio and uh, artists or somebody's coming in to work with you hey I got this artist they'll be here in two hours or three you can't afford to just have a dud you know you can't be like hey man I'm not feeling it today you know everybody understands this might not be my best song so yeah. you have to find ways to keep creating and that's just a little trick you know watching the movies even playing video games 
you know, I, I don't get too much on the video games, but some type of creativity where you're using the right side of your brain and staying active. It's like working out every day. You're not going to feel like going to the gym, but if you don't go to the gym long enough, you're going to be sore. It's going to yeah. be harder picking it back up. You know, if you, if you stay out the gym for two weeks, and you, you know, know what? Yeah. I'm glad you brought up the physical aspect. Cause that's important too. Back. You know, going out for a walk. Sometimes I don't know what's wrong with me, but when I go and I hit the trail or I hit the block and I get my blood pumping, I understand, okay, I just had a lot of pent up energy. And, you know, sometimes the only way to get it out is to um, be physical. You know what I mean? So don't ever neglect that. Make sure you're drinking your water, eating well, sleeping well. All of that is important. All of that is important. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes it helps just to make an assessment. Where is it that I'm not being kind to myself? You know, where is it that I could do better um, that'll help feed my creativity? So, I mean, it's really a lot. You know, we artists, of course, we do a whole lot of self-reflection and picking ourselves apart. But that's important, like, to keep that communication open with yourself. Yeah. And one last thing, too, guys, if you feel in that block is it goes back to what we're saying, networking collaborations you know build up a, a network in your phone hey i have five producers that I, I can tap in with i have five songwriters i could tap in with you know right. videographers you know people you trust so when you're down maybe they're like in their highest creative moment right now so you can go right. visit with them or invite them over to your your house or studio and that yeah. might energize you in a whole different way you know hey oh i didn't see you 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 tweak your snare or your vocals like this and man right. now i'm inspired to go home and and work on it and try it myself. You know, all these little things are great ways to stay active and consistent in the music industry. And, and guys, you, you, you're you hearing it from me, but you're also seeing it from Anya Anastasia. Like the work pays off, guys. The work pays off. It does. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, man, tell them one more time. I'm gonna let you get out of here. Okay. Tell them one more time where they can find you at, where you want everybody to go to tap in with you one more time. The easiest way to find me and get in touch with me and keep up with me is Instagram. So go to Instagram, Anastasia underscore Hera underscore. That's H-E-R-A, Hera like the goddess, Anastasia Hera. And yeah, like most most of what I'm doing, most of what's coming up for me, uh, most of my direct communication, you know, with with um, the people, you know, who keep up with me is, is through there. So let's And your it. YouTube page, tell them your YouTube. I'm going to put the links below, but just tell them. Uh, one more time where they can find you right. on YouTube as well. Because YouTube is so hard to change. It still has my old artist name. So official Anya on YouTube um, will take you to all of my, my visuals. And, you know, I've got some more coming up soon. I think I'm releasing, what, two more videos coming up this spring. I got some singles dropping. Oh. Um, so that'll be, the, that'll be there very soon. Um, so, yeah, Instagram and definitely my YouTube, official Anya. Definitely. Well, definitely, guys, y'all tap in with with Anastasia. If y'all watch this whole video this far, y'all are some real troopers. So don't don't cheat yourself. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to her channel. She has plenty more stuff to come. And I'm 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 subscribing. I I can't wait to see these (laughs) new videos because the last few videos have been off the chain for sure. So, but yeah, thank you for coming through on the Keys Method and sharing your gems and your wisdom and your time. I Absolutely. look forward to seeing you at the top, at the tip All right, top. Let's watch this. All right, peace, y'all. Right, have a good one. It's keys time.